Welcome, friends. I'm so honored to be joined in digital space today by the playwright of Alma, Benjamin Binet, and Sophie Franco, the director of Alma at Arts West. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this production is the Seattle premiere of the play in its current form, uh, but the play itself and Ben both have a history in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'll begin by saying that like I decided to pick up playwriting as like a professional endeavor while living in the Pacific Northwest. Um, this was back in 2013 and I had done theater all through high school and had uh, trained as a theater artist in undergrad but still hadn't really committed to like what path I wanted to take. I knew I belonged in the theater. I just didn't know in what capacity yet. Um, and I had dabbled quite a bit with playwriting, um, but didn't start taking it seriously until 2013. And I actually started taking class at like Freehold. Um, I met my incredible mentor, Rebecca Torino Collinsworth, who runs a writer's group called Parley, which was really influential and where I began writing um, sort of the, the first iteration of what would become Alma um, was in that writer's group. And uh, that was back in, I want to say like 2015-ish. It was like leading up to the election. And then in 2016, I had my first opportunity to write full time at the Playwright Center in Minnesota. And, uh, and post-election, I couldn't think about working on anything else other than this story about this mother and this daughter. Um, and the, the play used to be pretty sprawling and have multiple locations and multiple characters. But over the course of continuing to like hone in on the work, I really decided that I had always wanted to write a play that took place in real time and in a domestic space like a living room. It was a form that I had seen quite often and I'd heard it was really difficult to write a play that way. So I thought it would be a really fun challenge, especially with these two characters that I had grown so fond of um, in, the, in the previous iterations of the play that I had worked on. Um, and since then, the play uh, also was workshopped as part of Theater Battery season in Kent. Um, so I got to see a version of the play there and continue to develop it. Um, and since then, it's had its world premiere at Center Theater Group in Los Angeles earlier this year. Congratulations. It's an extraordinary play, and I'm so glad that, that we're able to do it in Seattle. As with all the work that we do at Arts West, Alma, I would say, has a kind of startling contemporary relevance, uh, but also in some ways, it's a beautiful story about a mother and daughter. And I think that it operates on both of those levels in such a gorgeous way. Franco, would you tell us a little bit about what happens in the play? No spoilers. Sure, sure, sure. Um, to me, the play is very much about this mother and daughter who come from very different worldviews and experiences. And right, they're so similar. They're both really stubborn. Um, and they are they both love each other so much and are trying to protect one another from this world outside of the living room that is so um, aggressive and violent. Um, and I really feel like that what happens in the show is that they are able to truly hear one another and be honest with one another about how deep their love for one another is, just about who they are as people. Um, I'm like, no spoilers, no spoilers. You know, that they are um, able to come together through a conflict and listen to one another and really work through it and uh, have moments of argument and tenderness. And that at the end, they are able to stand side by side really honestly with one another. Yeah, that I think for me is really what the show is about. I don't think there were any spoilers there. No, none that I heard. <laughs> yeah. um, so what is the state of the world and their lives when we meet Alma and Angel at the top of the show? December 2016, post-election. Um, and uh, Angel is supposed to go take her SAT test in the morning. And Alma has come home from work to help Angel study one last time for this super important test. Um, and there's a broken expectation. Angel is not home when Alma gets home and uh, the play just kind of goes from there. But it is this extremely heightened time in our history. Um, and also, right, it's like Trump, everything that's going on. And then also for right a teenager, the SAT is like this moment where you have six hours to take this test and it determines apparently the rest of your life and what your life is going to be. Um, and Something for me that really felt familiar was with my own experience with my parents who are immigrants and how they 
have a certain idea of like what it means to come here, be successful, the way to set your children up for success. And that is, that only looks one way. Um, and that angel is aware, right. That there are so many different options and things that she wants to explore, but Alma, Alma has a certain view about what is going to keep her child safest. Um, and you know, there are a lot of conversations around that. Um, so yeah, that felt super familiar. I was like, oh man, I've totally had this conversation with my parents. Definitely. Mm -hmm.